By now, you've probably seen the video. Mike Patey, his wife, and a passenger are all okay after a crash on takeoff in Draco. Draco, of course, is the custom-built turboprop bush plane based on a PZL Wilga. Patey designed and built the machine. It was totaled upon takeoff from Reno Stead Airport, where it had been on static display for the Reno Air Races. Mike Patey is a prolific vlogger, so what did he do? Well, he jumped out and started recording. There's lessons to be learned. Here's Draco. Dang it. <laughs> I am so bummed right now. But I, uh, everybody kept asking me, did you have a mechanical problem? Did the gear fail? Did the engine fail? Did it hiccup? Did it do anything? No, no, no. Nothing went wrong but me, the strong wind, and the wind got under that wing, and that was over. So, I want to make sure everyone knows that's what it was. I make no excuses. Pilot error, pilot error, pilot error. This is going to haunt me for a long time. AOPA Live's Paul Harrop joins us now. Paul, you're one of the people that got to fly Draco. It's a real loss for the community. Got to fly in Draco, and yeah, it's a it's a tremendous loss. First, I think the most important thing is that, that Mike and Chandra and their passenger were not hurt, but it is a big emotional toll. We talk about inspiring people to fly. Draco really did that. It's this monster 680 horsepower bush plane with massive gear. At every fly-in, you'd see kids wearing Draco t-shirts. You'd see adults wearing shirts that make references to it. This whole cottage industry around Draco fan gear has popped up and it really goes to show how Stoll is so popular right now. It's something that the average pilot can aspire to and it gets you right up to the line at the air show. You can be a lot closer to that than you can for an aerobatic demonstration. So people really feel a part of that. And Draco was kind of the pinnacle of that. It's what you could do if you had unlimited craftsmanship ability to put this thing together and build your dream airplane. And, and now, sadly, it's, it's no longer going to fly. Right. Yeah, so I have a, a little bit of time in a round engine wheel, go one of the original ones. This one is so different, so much modified. What's it like to fly? You know, it's a lot more comfortable than I had thought it would be. It took a little bit to climb up into it, but once you're in it, it's really comfortable. As you know, then Wilgas kind of have a leaned back, lawn chair kind of feel to them. Well, you add that big gear and you're almost like you're going to space or something, leaned way back. But it wasn't as much of a roller coaster as I had expected it to be. I was uh, privileged to take a ride with, with Mike after High Sierra last year. We took off. He was fully loaded with fuel, fully loaded with gear, and this thing still climbed out at 4,500 feet per minute off a 4,000-foot elevation strip in the desert in the heat. So it's just a, a tremendous machine, and uh, as sadly as, as Mike says, it's, it's now totaled. Oh, well, that's uh, sorry to hear that, but uh, as everybody says, glad that they're okay. Absolutely. Mike made it clear he blames himself and his decision to take off when he probably shouldn't have. We want to help you avoid a similar mistake. The Air AOPA Air Safety Institute has resources to help you establish personal minimums. There are IFR and VFR personal minimum contracts that you can fill out and use on the ASI website. Executive Director Richard McSpadden says personal minimums should always be evolving, but changing them should be done with purpose. A great example is when you're flying at somewhere where there's cross runways and there's a pretty strong wind, to go out and actually try some practice approaches in the crosswind runway, not the not the dominant runway, and see how your see how you feel, see see how your uh, skills develop in that scenario, and then you'll get a feel for oh, I feel really good about controlling the airplane in this scenario. You can find them on AirSafetyInstitute.org.